Hi, I'm Nikki. The terrible sound in the background is our washing machine because Spaceman has peed. But today I'm not talking about my dog's urination issues. I'm talking about Automail! So one of the top requested things on my channel is how I made my Automail for my Edward Albert cosplay. Um, I made that in a matter of three days and nights and a lot of last minute procrastination. Um, and this is also kind of a lot of last minute procrastination, but I have more than a week to make it because I'm wanting to make this build in time for Katsukon. So um, I've never recorded a process sort of thing with um, any like cosplay stuff aside from like makeup tutorials or wig tutorials and shit like that so I apologize in advance if this really sucks. So I guess I will just start with um, the templating which I will now give this to Ratchet so we can see the templates. To start out you will do you will need to make your templates and how I made my templates was starting by wrapping my right arm and most of my chest in saran wrap and then duct taping it together to kind of make like a mold. You will definitely, definitely need a friend to do this, so make sure you have someone who is willing to do that for you. And then whenever you're done with that, you will carefully cut it off your arm. And then what I do is I retape the seams from where I've cut it and uh, draw on <laughs> Rock'em's, <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em washer. Are you done? And so on the taped mold of my arm, I then draw on the auto mail and what I'm wanting to like cut out and trace into a pattern. Once you have your duct tape off and cut off and your pattern more or less, I'm doing a shitty job explaining this, you'll have like your wrap, which is what I call like the first step in making your template. And you'll take your wrap, put it on some manila folders, trace it out, and then start building your templates from there. So from this gross thing, you will get this, which is your template, which you will put on the metal once you've made your manila folder template, which I definitely recommend, especially if you haven't worked with metal or PVC foam or tape or anything like that, just because you kind of are able to work out the kinks and like what piece is going where. Um, with the manila folders, which is a lot easier to deal with and handle. So yeah, I am super type A and have everything labeled in their own little things so I don't lose any pieces. Um, I have it labeled like um, armor would be since more or less Edward Elric's arm is armor. So I have it labeled by the rare brace, van brace, rare brace trim, the port, which that's not really like an armoring term, but that's what they call the piece that's on his torso in the show, which is the part where all of it connects into his body. Um, that's the port. The hand, which I'm not gonna do the hand unless I have time to do the hand, because I'm okay with the hand I have now, because that's the, one, that's the part that takes the longest amount of time. Um, the elbow still needs its own uh, folder. And then the uh, plates, as well as up here is the pauldron. If you guys don't know any of this terminology, I have a cosplay uh, playlist where I've learned most of my armor making techniques and stuff like that off of um, YouTube channels where they make just like armor and there's a few that do like auto mail inspired armor or winter soldier inspired armor. Um, or you can just like look up armor and medieval armor. Um, and all that stuff. So once you've made all of your manila folder stuff, and I'd recommend keeping it all labeled for if you're like me and like to keep making different builds of this, you know, keep it all organized so you can go back to it. Once you have it all traced onto the manila folders, you will assemble it like this. Um, I used brads as placeholder, um, either places where I'll be soldering it or places that I will be putting the rivets in because I will be riveting this all together like um, armor. So this is all of the template pieces riveted together and formed together and I've already tried it on and all I really need to do is like make these pieces a little bit larger but I'll do that whenever I trace them onto the metal. Um, 
and then even so like this still fit pretty decently I just want it to fit a little bit bigger because I like to do open chest binding for Ed sometimes. And so once you finish templating, then you can move on to the materials. I recommend using Forbla or some sort of foam because using metal is really stupid. Um, don't do it, but I'm doing it. This is like my fourth time doing this. The end. Alright guys, so I apologize that I look like shit, I just got out of the shower, but I wanted to vlog and talk to you guys about this whole auto mail process. So, um, I have successfully traced out um, all of my um, patterns for the port and put them on what I have now acquired, 22 gauge steel. I found some at... Home Depot for about 10 bucks for a one foot by two foot uh, sheet and I like that a bit better than the really big cheap sheet that I got um, I thought I could cut through it with my snip clips I was wrong and so we decided to break out the big special boy that is the metal shear and this metal shear <laughs> does not like us very much and we don't like it um, I have weak um, wrists, so I can't really hold this with one hand and then keep the metal down. Um, and it also just really likes to go in a straight line as opposed to handling like really um, dynamic curves. So my plan is when Rachel gets back, because I'm having a pain flare up and can't drive, um, when Rachel gets back, I, uh, we are going to go look into a different shear that is more like a nibbler. And so what I really ideally wanted was a nibbler, um, but I do not have an air compressor. And um, really, I mean, I technically can afford the $300 um, electric nibbler, but I'd really rather not because uh, that's really expensive to spend on a tool and I've already spent a lot of money on this build anyways um, so if that little doodad does not work out um, <laughs> kind of screwed and we'll probably have to bite the bullet and get the more expensive power tool to do what I want to do so I am hoping that this other power tool that we find will work or at least is able to be like a bit more manageable and like you know being able to take off small pieces and make the curves work because that's what we were doing last night with part of it um, but overall it just really wasn't working out I'm really not that happy with the tool and how it performs it's also just a little bit too big for me um, but I'm looking into my other options so I wanted to show you guys some of the work we did last night this is the 22 gauge steel so here are all of the pieces for the port traced out on here. Well, these are all the big pieces. There's a lot of smaller pieces that still need to be done. I've traced these out with Sharpie, and the Sharpie does a pretty good job with A staying on, um, except for like this part, because it does rub off, but I'd rather the Sharpie, it rubs or cleans off pretty efficiently, but you know, if you mess it up um, and need to redraw on there, that's not that big of a deal. So here's the areas where we had tried with the... Um, tool with the metal shears and also when it cuts it cuts in these big strips which I knew it was going to do that um, but I forgot about that when I was tracing all these onto the metal so we were able it's able to handle like wide curves like this but you really got to get it started on a straight curve and work it around like that and it's kind of annoying we had a little screw up here which I may be stuck having to uh recut this little dude out this bad boy is our 16 gauge deal as you can tell he does not like to bend hi Desiree um, he does not like to bend but if you put enough force on it it does bend this is what I'm mostly wanting for the um, hi daily hi um, this is what I'm mostly wanting for the grill as well as the um, shoulder uh plates that's what i'm mostly wanting it for i think i'll probably just be using one sheet and being able to return the other sheet because i got two sheets just to be safe um and also when you guys are like doing your builds and stuff like that please get a little bit extra 
um, unless you've done this sort of stuff before because it's always easier to have a little bit extra and return what you don't use and save a little bit of money than to not buy enough and be like lol help Welcome back to a shitty auto mail tutorial with Nikki and Rachel. Ta da! <laughs> so, um, we got our new tool that I talked about earlier. This is the other steel shear, um, metal shear, and um, I've named it Bertha in my head. Who wants to watch it go vroom? Um, I'm scared of it, actually. Um, also, I'm in a lot of pain right now. So it's probably wiser for practice. science rules. <laughs> so we're trying to meticulously cut all these little pieces out using Bertha. Um, Bertha's doing a better job than Steve. Fuck Steve you, sucks. Steve. <laughs> we're also thinking that perhaps we'll have to um, recut these out on a different piece because there's a piece that we've already fucked up. And by we, I mean Rachel, but. We are a joint unit right now. She is my metal cutting tool. And you're just my tool. And I'm just your tool. <sighs> There's Bertha! Here she is! The big special girl. People that are watching this tutorial, that this is probably not the safest way to cut this. You maybe have like an actual tool shed with like an actual table with like something actually clamping your metal. But here we are doing it on a log in our shitty apartment. So let's go! <laughs> your mommies might die. How do you feel about that? Yeah, we can fix it. We have the technology. Rachel fucked up one of the pieces. That goes on my chest, It bitch. went too fast. What did you do? I cut them out! Look! Look like they were like this! They were this close together, and I cut them out without ruining either of these. Shit. Ugh, call me Winry Rock Bell. Hi, Winry Rock Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I am reworking some of the templates again. This is customary to my bullshit my way through this until it looks okay fashion. Um, so this was once the under van brace and I cut out about this much excess on it. Usually I wouldn't worry about this too harshly but since we're using Bertha to cut everything out I'd like it to be as close as possible to where I have to do a minimal amount of um, uh, adjustments to it especially since like I don't want to kill Ratchet. Um, show everybody my masterpieces? Yeah, one sec. Um, so yeah, so I think this will fit a lot better, and then even if it doesn't, it'll be easier to just like fold the seams in to make it smaller, so it's best to cut it out just a little bit bigger as opposed to it a little bit smaller, because then you kind of screw it. Um, from us rewatching Brotherhood No. 3, I really hate this template for the grill, so I'm gonna change it up a bit. Um, probably won't do that tonight, since we're doing that on the 16 gauge. We have our plating templates already done. I've already bent them out how they're supposed to be bent. But before we cut these out, I want to make um, the port and the uh, rear brace, uh, van brace, rear brace, rear brace. That's the upper arm part to make sure that these do still fit appropriately to the metal because I don't want to cut these babies out and then them not fit. And we have wasted metal and ratchet power um and then this is the cauldron i'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger because this does go on my shoulder and it's more of a connecting piece but i want to make sure i have like enough metal to work with um and again it'll be easier to shave this down as opposed to like try to rebuild an entirely new one but as you can see this more or less goes underneath this top plate and it connects to the port so i want to make sure i have enough room to connect this to the port um, once it's dished out, I don't think it'll be an issue, but I'd rather it be about like uh, half an inch bigger all the way around just so I have enough room to work with it, but it's also a simple enough piece. This isn't going to take like ages to cut out. This will also be done in the 22 gauge. It looks like we're mostly working with, working with 22 gauge. Um, our elbow has gotten exponentially easier. I got a smaller one of these the other day and I'm going to dismantle just this part and adjust it as needed. This part will probably need bold out a little bit more just to fit my elbow shape more accurately, but I think this is going to work pretty well. We have a lot of the 
support cut out. We have these two pieces cut out, which they fit on the carpet, um, on each other like so. So you can kind of get a feel of how that looks. And then I'm pretty sure that's how these babies go. So these are how these two are going. They're supposed to be reversed, but with Did how- I fuck it up? Yeah, you fucked up a little bit. What? I didn't fuck it up. You fucked up drawing it. But yeah, so we're making pretty good headway. We're gonna use that scrap metal to make the baby little bits that go onto the port. And my goal is to get all of this cut out before we start doing any main like working and stuff. So that way it's all done and dirty and over with. So hopefully that will all be cut out by tomorrow, question mark. I don't know, are you gonna buy me more metal? Yeah, babe, buy all the metal. She's gonna be winery now, just saying. Ready. Let a girl cut out some metal, so I'm gonna use a rock Next doll. thing you know, I'm gonna be in full win Win. Win? Winry cosplay. Go I mean, go. <laughs> Already out, or is it busted? So, since we're back on Nikki's really shitty tutorials, we're cutting out the grill. <laughs> Much thanks to Kristen's dad. Say hello. It's been taking a while, but it's an arduous process. And then we have been doing some touch-up work on the hands, but since I'm gonna redo this in a few months anyways, all we've really done is just solder this piece onto this back hand plate. Then I'm just gonna glue this on. Really, I need it to just last me through katsu. Um, but I also use the solder to just kind of like further melt the glue on these knuckle pieces. So that's great. I also sound crazy talking to a camera. I've also filed down all the edges on the automail pieces, so they're good to be bent, dished, and bold, and riveted together, but this thing's our main focus. Hoping to get it done tonight. The con is like in three weeks? How many weeks until the con ratchet? God, not enough. Like not two and enough. a half, three? No, no, not two and a half. It's more than that. Let me find oh, out. Oh, thank God. Uh, I thought we had less time. One, two, and a half. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't this not a really shitty tutorial? <laughs> yeah, yes. Chilling at the space heater. Chilling at the space heater. Rachel's doing gloves. They look really good, babe. <laughs> yeah. I'm very proud of you. Look at how contoured they are to my finger. There's a... There's a tough one. Oh, so now we're trying out a different tool. We're down to one more grill. Yes. One more. One more. Look how good of a job this is. So we're gonna lose the monster this time. We we're gonna use, to are we gonna name it? We should name it. To Bertha over there. Do you name your tool? No. no. We should name, Rachel, what do you wanna name this? It's gotta be a male though. Uh, Jimmy. What Jimmy? <laughs> The slicer. The slicer! Jimmy the slicer. He's a mass murderer. That sounds like something from a mob. You know? <laughs> this is Jimmy, Jimmy the slicer. slicer. He'll really fuck you up. <laughs> oh so we're God. hoping Jimmy the slicer will make the last one go a bit faster. faster. The slicer will go faster. Oh my God, Rachel, why am I doing this? <laughs> Why are you doing this? That's what I ask myself as I'm cutting metal for her. Yeah. <laughs> why am I doing this? Help the sick kid make a metal arm. Yeah. We love her, Nikki. Yes, Nikki loves you guys. Oh, We're now dear. calling Jimmy a potential bad idea. Oh my god. This a drunk funny. idea at 3 in the morning. This is like one of those 3 a.m. drunk ideas. It really is. <laughs> oh my gosh. There he goes. The big special wow. boy. It's got a safety switch on it, like right here. Oh, and that's good. I'm glad Jimmy the Slicer is safe at the end of the day. <laughs>
Oh my god, what did I do? Explosion. No promises. No, don't stand that way. How is I mean, I'm just, you know, documenting. I mean, you know. Jimmy failed us. No, Jimmy over. Jimmy was too strong. He Jimmy's too zealous. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's too strong. He earned his name, literally, like. The slicer. <laughs> like, that was like murder. That's a 150, 187. I'm sorry. So, Jimmy's, Jimmy's so we're going to go back to. Uh, we, need, we need Billy. We need little boy Billy. Instead, little boy Billy? Is little, that little boy yeah. Billy is the little dribble and yeah. then big Jimmy. The little the dribble they could. <laughs> he tried, Joe. <laughs> well, he's still running, so he's I don't know. That one may come so back. So well, I think it just got too hot. But that's okay. So, this is easy. Hey, actually, this is a good document. So any of those little snap Dremel deals when anybody's trying to fight this thing and try to figure it out, drop it down, pick it up, turn it, and out it goes. Grab the new blade, drop it down here, turn it, and it locks in there, and there you are. Good deal. It's done. All we need to do is hone out these two for the file, and I can do that real quick if you want me to. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's knock this out. All right, guys, so the next part after you cut it out is you go in with the file and file it down to a rounded edge. We're using a rounded file. And it's about to get loud. And it's about to get Very real loud, loud again. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Record, you piece of shit. <laughs> Welcome back to Nikki's really shitty auto mail tutorial featuring Calvin, who's eating my log. <laughs> so it's not a tutorial if you don't show them this shit. <laughs> it's really not. So so far, I have um, began the deep bowling process of my pauldron. You didn't even, did you even tell them that you cut shit out? Yes. Okay. I think. That you sanded shit? Yes. All right. I think. Um, <laughs> uh, so I've started the bowling process on the pauldron. Um, I think it's pretty good as it is right now, but I may want to bowl it out a little bit more. But so far, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that little doodad. I'm, I'll adjust it once I make the port and <sighs> rare brace. Rare brace. Um, I've also made the under part of the uh, van brace so that's underneath and then um, the uh, grill goes on top of that so they're two separate pieces that attach. Um, as I talk about this I realize I still need to get epoxy and um, or honestly, I can just rip it in the elastic. I need to get elastics. That's the thing. Kevin, do you want to eat this, sir? Does it look tasty? No, I didn't Aww. think so. Um, I tried some dishing right here, but like honestly, it's formed well enough to where I'm happy with it. So I'm not going to bother with that anymore. And how I've been shaping it is by bending it around my PPC thing. <laughs> Yeah, Rachel, what else, what, what else am I talking about? <laughs> Aside from automail, you automail. sick fucking pervert. Um, and so then I'll also hammer it onto the PVC pipe um, just to better get that look. Um, my neighbors do hate me, in case you were wondering, more than they already do. Um, this The only adjustments I need to make on this so far is to bring these parts in a little bit more. Um, but as you can see from the way I'm recklessly handling this, this has been sanded and beveled down so the edges are not sharp and I don't get kindly escorted out of any uh, convention centers. So now we're just gonna get back to work on that and uh, not show you any of it. Not show you any of it. All right, so super important update. The drill does nothing on the metal, the 22 gauge metal, but the nail, hammering a nail in does. So we're able to get through. So whew, I was really afraid that I wouldn't be able to rivet, rivet together any of my 22 gauge steel um, 
which thankfully I can because I can get the nail to pierce it. Um, but with the 16 gauge steel, like with on the grill, it's not doing anything. Hammering in the nail is not doing anything. Like just nothing's really working on this boy. Um, so I'll probably just revert to using decorative rivets, which is totally fine because I'm not really riveting it to anything since it's an independent piece. But a little bit of a bummer not being able to actually put rivets in it, but I think I may give it a go with the hammer and nail method. But yes, just letting you guys know. So we've got the two pieces of the van brace done. Aside from doing just more or less decorative riveting, I'll check this one off as completed. So more or less how I've gotten this to be put on my arm is you gotta put it in kind of like at an angle and then turn your wrist into it and more or less it locks it into place pretty well. Um, it does slide around just a little bit but nothing too crazy. And then the grill goes right on top of that. Grill goes on top. And this will be secured with elastics. And yeah, so the grill's all finished. And underneath it, I'm going to put uh, just some black foam for now. You look proud of it, Nikki. It looks good. It looks so much better than the old shit. Like, let's compare and contrast. Comcast. Comcast. Uh, Comcast. So this is the old one. Ew. Look at that. And this is our new one. Wow. The difference is stark. Far she goes. Yes, your smile in this is a good <laughs> addition. <laughs> Look at that bend! Okay, so some major auto mail updates on the port. So, uh, I kind of fucked up the templating on this, but honestly, like, the port isn't the super, like, most important part. Um, I more or less inversed this with this so I don't have like that curvature that I'm wanting up by the chest. Um, and I really don't wanna go through the process of having to like recut that metal out. So I'm just gonna have to deal, um, which kind of sucks because this is gonna like cut in here. Um, all right, so I reconfigured it a bit and this is looking um, a lot better, I guess. I don't know, I really fucked up and somehow inverted my templates. So I trimmed the templates a bit. So this is what this part's going to look like. And then all the way down and around. Um, still not the craziest about it, simply because like I didn't mean to mess up so badly. But like trial and error is how a lot of cosplay shit goes. I'm thinking on like trimming this down too, just so that like it's a bit easier for my arm to move around and I don't have like this metal piece stabbing in there. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate how little sense this fucking thing makes? So like, okay, I had a right, right? But I don't know what I was thinking doing this, aside from just making Rachel's hands hurt. Reference images, guys. You just gotta really stick with your reference images. All right, welcome back to Nikki's really shitty tutorials on how to do things. <laughs> Featuring Dallas. <laughs> playing whatever the fuck that is. But his Outside. cat's in a scuba suit outside of the water, so it seems like a good time. So, yeah, it's a scuba cat or something. Anyways, um, this is what we're doing so far. I have reconfigured the rear brace to a more acceptable length. I'm going to add on this border more or less just by bending up the thingamajig. It'll be a good time. I have this here with this part whatevered out so I can just that whole thing. Not sure if I fucked up the elbow parts, but we'll figure that out in a little bit. Um, and then I've also, as you can tell by all these like lovely puncture holes, more or less roughly figured out where the um, rivets will be in the rear brace. So that's looking good and it looks like it'll actually fit my arm this time. 
Um, and then this is the port. We have the holes drilled in thanks to this guy because my weak wrists. Hey, Ratchet. I think we still have another plate over here that the holes need drilled in, but he's on a break, so whatevs. Um, I'm also not riveting in it, it in right now. So for this, we're going to get all the rivet holes drilled out, rivet all the holes together, and then start bending this to my body shape. Um, and then here's our plates, which we've cut out twice, three times now. Um, the, the plates suck. Nobody likes them. Um, but we gotta bend them and then put them on the fucking rat race. <laughs> I have also drilled holes in the van brace. So I'll be able to attach the straps that way, which will be much better. What'd you just say, Rachel? What is this video it's, it's now? It's a making up, not a tutorial. Yeah. This is a bad tutorial. This is a tutorial. I don't know why. It's a shitty tutorial. Anyways, so we're admiring made. stupid, and then we're admiring General not Grievous's so stupid. General face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Here's our van brace. Rare brace. Whatever. It goes on the upper arm. Dallas's this man muscles made this thing happen. And we are very thankful for him. So thankful. I almost dropped this on your computer and it's kind of heavy. Uh, yeah. Fuck. So I feel like someone could like, see, like making it out of fucking durable metal makes me, you know, realize that there's a reason he just like sticks his arm and shit <laughs> to protect himself. Yeah, you can just bludgeon the desk with, with your arm. Yup. You like flop around. Nice punch, dead. Uh, anyway, isn't it beautiful? Are you gonna talk about how the, your rivets work? How about you do that, babe? Um, I'm not your auto mail mechanic. I've been sanding down shit for you, but that doesn't mean I'm making this shit. Yeah. Unless I, I get credit for it. When people ask you how'd you make that, are you gonna be like, oh yeah, my girlfriend helped me? I'm gonna be like, yeah, my girlfriend and like 16 other people helped me make yeah. it. <laughs> It's been three people so far. Three people have helped me make it. Because being six sucks when you want to make a uh, metal arm. So this is the 16 gauge steel. Two yep. plates of it. Riveted on to the 22 gauge. So here are the rivets, which are just nails that Nikki's cut and that I've sanded down so they actually fit through the holes that Dallas was... Drilling. Drilling into earlier. You, threw, you showed them the drill holes. I did. Very good. That's it. Yeah. Nikki and seamed then, this. Yeah. Did you talk about that? Uh, yeah, I, t I talked about doing it, but there it is done. There it is done. This is why it's a bad tutorial. No, no, no. <laughs> there that's it the is. good part. They just want to see it go, oh, there it is. Oh, there, oh, it, is. Oh, there it is. That's how that works. Yeah, you just you just tap these in. You just tap Real them. Real gentle-like with a hammer. Yes, yes. And a strong burly man. And a strong burly man. <laughs> tap tap. A strong burly tap. A strong burly tap. <laughs> and then you're done. Oh, auto man. We need tiny taps. How tiny were the taps, Dallas? Uh, my arms don't know. My arms don't know. Little numb. Numb burly taps. Numb burly taps. Hello, friends. We are back in the apartment with Nikki's really shitty automail progression tutorial things. You guys asked for this, I told you it would be bad. Um, so here is our rare brace, mostly, I would say 98% completed. We have these top bits riveted, but this bottom part is <laughs> falling off my stump. <laughs> so these bottom parts have not been riveted. Mostly because I'm still figuring out that really fun elbow joint. I thought I had figured out the elbow joint, but um, then it looked like shit. Then it looked like shit. I will show you um, the shit. The shit. Uh, let's see, it's in our great big bag of shit. Uh, so here's our, our little friend. Looks like shit, am I right? But our little shit does have moving joints, so this is our prototype because lord help me if i riveted it onto my nice looking rare brace i have made it a little bit larger from what i originally wanted to hence me having two rivet holes 
because my I, I realized you know what um, I, I don't want to lose circulation in my arm like I usually do when I wear my auto mail so um, there's that we've also got the port riveted together and sanded thanks to Rachel Rachel's yeah. been our sander today sander of many things including nails including nails um, but yeah so all I really have to do is start bending this into the shape of my body Ooh. And uh, <laughs> I may add in another rivet up here just because this keeps popping up and I don't want that to stab me in the neck. Um, but yeah, so Your far it's. Goes? Yeah, it's like up Ew. by my neck. So it is. There's all that put together. Strong Man also helped. Stra shout out to Strong Man. Strong Man would be Dallas, Kristen's boyfriend. What a gift he is. And a strong rich. <laughs> a strong rich. Not so strong. But that was is the gift that It'll keeps on giving. Um, and then here is our van brace. It's horribly deformed. I mean, not horribly. I just, it's horribly deformed in the fact of like when I try to put it on, it's not doing its thing. Um, I'm really not sure how these elastics are working out, to be completely honest. Rachel, get that off your I'm arm. I'm afraid to get this stuck. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, you. This needs to be sanded more. Rachel. You're going to cut yourself on this again. Good. No! I won't feel it. Cut my life into pieces! Um, so yeah, I'm still fully figuring out uh, if the elastics are gonna work with this, but I think I'll just make them work for Katsukon because... Damn, son, I gotta get this done. Um, and then here's our plate, our plate that connects a lot of the shoulder pieces together. P3. There he is. See? Yep. Yeah. All right, so we have fixed the wonky rivets. I still have a few rivets that are a bit loose or just kind of weird, but honestly, um, they're pretty, <laughs> the rivets are really hard to get out, even though they are a bit wonky and not really feeling themselves on trying to get out. So I'm just gonna leave them as is, and once they pop out, I'll re-rivet them. Um, but these little rivets that Rachel has, I've separated them out into this separate little bin, but these things work pretty well uh, for rivets. They rivet in really quick, really easy, really fast. So, um, sorry, Rachel, for always giving you shit about these rivets. <laughs> um, so I have properly labeled the back and the front and the inside of this uh, because I started bending it and doing all that shit and it was the wrong side, so. All right, so please ignore my full metal playlist going on in the background to motivate me to get this shit done. Um, so the back side of this rivet has popped off. Granted, this um, has not been drilled very well, mostly because it was really close to this seam, and we knew that doing it, um, but this is one of the, the trials and tribulations. So I'm going to continue bending it, um, and if I really do still need these two uh, secure it. I'm gonna add in another rivet down here But I mean, I think it'll hold fine, especially once I um, Merge the two sides and rivet those together. So it should be good. It should be okay, but uh, An issue Another rivet has fallen It's these I take it back. These may not be a good idea ah, Okay Cool Cool but hey, it's bending really well. Um, 22 gauge steel is bending like a dream. Um, oh, also another note, this one popped off another seam that uh, did not really want to, we drilled, we fucked up with the drill again. So there seems to be a theme here. Um, but yeah, it's bending very nicely. Um, I'm doing it by hand with some dishing and also with this PVC pipe, I'm bending it over the PVC very slowly, very carefully. Um, the 22 gauge you can bend by hand, well I can at least. Um, so I'm able to like bend some more of the finer pieces like these in pieces a little bit closer in. Guys, uh, do this with a friend or something. So I'm sitting on this thing so I can get a C-clamp on the auto mail so I can rivet in our rivet. And like, uh, I haven't eaten all day and I'm kind of feeling dizzy for some reason. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm doing now to get that rivet back in because I don't really want to bend it 
anymore until that rivets back. Um, mostly because it's near my neck in the build, so kind of need the rivet there. Got it in there, full metal fucking alchemist, am I right? So, not quite. So, some news. It's looking like a port. <laughs> um, but it, I can't put my arm down. All right, so here's my old auto mail. Like the old port, it's pretty destroyed now because I've been ripping it apart. This is how it's supposed to fit. And the other one just isn't really working out right now. So I'm thinking what the easiest like choice of action may be is to just completely remake it and use this as our base template. Um, should have just done that in the first place, but you know, I'm an idiot. So I'm either crazy or a genius, probably both, but I have figured out a workaround. My um, deciding to redo the uh, port. So this is my old port. This is my old port covered in tape. This is my old port covered in tape and Sharpie. I am making another template. And for this template, I am planning on doing three plates that will all be riveted down here. So the thought is all I have to do is cut out three more pieces of metal and rivet them all together at the bottom and like obviously like around the rest of it because it'll need to be like riveted around because there'll be three big pieces of metal more or less. But um, the, f the idea behind this is uh, so that I don't have to be riveting together a bunch of small intimate pieces. Um, granted his port has like 50 different fucking pieces and makes no fucking sense, but um, I'm just trying to make this as smooth and easy and uh, painless as possible, more or less, um, because Edward Elric's auto mail makes no, no sense whatsoever. All right, so here is our new template for the base. And, um, there's the excess. I mean, I'm going to transfer them over onto the um, manila folder and then also give about a few centimeters space so that we can layer them and rivet them together but as you can see it's three separate pieces so hopefully this will make our hiccup you know speed up faster I'm now listening to some Marina and the Diamonds thing I don't know I'm just playing every video on her channel I guess it's another FAQ um, but yeah so I will uh, yeah. All right, now our lovely templates have been drawn into the metal. I still had some leftover metal from the other 22 gauge sheet I had, so thankfully I won't have to use the other 22 gauge sheet I got because I got two of them to be safe. Um, but yeah. Here we are, back to sanding. I didn't even notice you came out. I just got out of the bathtub because Pain. I think the dogs really hate this noise. Yeah. So we're sanding down the pieces. We have them cut out. Rachel, how was cutting them out? Oh, yeah, it was fun. It Jeez. smells like butter. Look at these fucking curves, man. Yeah. Look shit. At Didn't mess with anything. Looks crazy. You may have overpowered me over the weekend, but today I am the master. I say that and then I'm going to like Dremel right through it. Rachel. Isn't she the greatest? So, like, disclaimer, don't fucking do this in your house. Do it in the goddamn garage. We might be doing this. But, what, what do they say in, like, stunt things? Do not try this at home! Oh. Sorry, were you trying to say something? Yeah, I said I don't deserve you. Oh. That's sweet. <laughs> I love you. I love you too! Thank you, dude. So, not all of our pieces are cut out and sanded down and I've drilled the holes on the outer piece. Um, it is time to start bending it. Um, I have our trusty little template already like set up and haphazardly um, riveted together just to be sure that we don't have any mistakes this go around. So 
I will now start bending the metal. How I bend the metal is I work it over this pipe and then do some dishing on this stump um, with these two tools. It's a pretty fun time. I'll update you guys as we go along. Look at them. They're all nicely bent. I still have some uh, detail work to kind of do on these inner corner parts just because like that's how this bends so you kind of got to like push in the corners of it but I'm getting pretty tired my stomach's really hurting but um I think these are gonna work out I'm kind of mad at myself for not thinking of this design sooner because this is infinitely easier than what I was doing um but yeah I've already like preliminarily fit the pieces on my body and it already fits significantly better than the last thing I was doing so this little doodad has helped a lot I bent the metal around um this form uh to make sure that it was uh, going to like fit to my body and it's done an excellent job at doing that I taped down my templates to this uh base of my chest um <clears throat> And that's really helped form all of these pieces. So now after I do just some like detail bending and stuff like that, I will um, rivet these two pieces together and then do some final like bending out and around and then rivet this combined piece to this under piece and then start attaching the pauldron. All right, so now I have taped the template onto the um, metal that I bent last night and I'm now going to put this, this piece um, on it to match it up to where it needs to align to, which more or less is going to be like a little bit, it's more or less like me marking where the drill holes will be going on um, the this piece. So I'm lining it up. Calvin's helping. He's a good helper today. Um, so I'm lining it up. So more or less where this ends. This is my um, grace area where I can drill my holes. Um, so I'm just lining it up to mark where the hole drills, where the drills need to go, where the holes for the drill needs to go. Um, and then I will rivet this together and um, then fully finish uh, uh, doing all like the detail work and stuff like that. And then I will rivet this onto it under here. Right, Calvin? Sir? He's the best little helper. The best helper for months. Take a look at this port. Ah! Okay, um, so here it is, riveted together. Um, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add in a few extra rivets just so that I feel like it's a little bit more secure because I don't want any of these little babies popping out. So I'm gonna add an extra one here, and an extra one here, and then an extra one here. So I'm gonna add in three more. Um, this process is pretty grueling but hey um it'll be worth it and um it's turning out a lot better this time around so yay all right so here it is we just have to add in the bottom piece and then i'm going to work on bending and shaping it it more close to my body because this part sticks out just a little bit we're going to bend that inwards and then this one's gonna be bent closer down to my body but otherwise like this is turning out really good, you guys. Port completed. It still needs some fine tune adjusting, but like, it's fitting pretty good. Like, fuck guys. So here's a prelim of all the pieces on so far. Um, it's not like the prettiest prelim because I don't feel like super adjusting everything as if I'm like about to go on the con floor, but it's looking uh, like some auto mail now. So close, but so far away. Con crunches are like one of the worst things. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've died and this is my eternal punishment. Um, so I am re-looking at my van brace 
And I'm really not feeling my elastic idea, mostly because I think the reason it worked for my friend Louie was because she was not an idiot and put these elastics on a very like specific place on her auto mail, so like, you know, they didn't overlap. And also, like, it's cutting off the circulation in my arm pretty badly, which is a concern considering how much I wear this cosplay. So I'm thinking on just riveting it together, mostly because, like, you know, that's how I've always done the van brace and low-key kind of miss it being riveted together. The two pieces together are just, like, it's just not working for me, guys. Like, it's just not doing it for me, unfortunately. Um... So I'm gonna start kind of like reworking it, trying to figure out how in the world I'm gonna do this. Um, easiest thing to do might be to remake the under part and just rivet it together. That wouldn't take too long, so long as Rachel's in a, a, a mood to uh, do that. Um, because shaping out that bottom part wasn't very difficult. It took like maybe 10 minutes, so. Um, I'm also still trying to figure out that fucking elbow, um, but who the fuck knows. Good morning, I am like officially sick and still working on this shit and we leave for the con tomorrow. So here are the new pieces cut out, here's the new pauldron. I think I figured out the elbow piece, but even if I haven't, we're just going to make do with this. Hello Calvin, sir, please get off me. So even if I haven't, we're going to make do with these. And then here's our new under van brace piece. So yeah, happy Valentine's Day to me. I will be working on auto mail um, and feeling like death. Death, Kevin. Death. So we have an elbow and it has a moving joint. I figured out how to do moving joints with the shit rivets. Um, this more or less is a placeholder um, just so that I can get this arm done for this con. But I'm actually really happy with how this elbow's turned out. Like, guys, look at it. It looks like an elbow. Um, the joint, the, uh, the rivets are a little too loose, but, I mean, I guess rather it be a little too loose than, like, you know, lock jaw tight. But, I mean, I'm really happy with how it's looking, so. <gasps> Yay! Something not like that? Dick Saber? That's Dick your Saber. Dick Saber. Please name your computer Dick Saber. Am I recording? Yes. Oh, cool. All right, so after a major medical procedure and an entire con later. Uh, I finished the auto mail. Um, like I said, this is the worst tutorial ever. You guys asked for this. Here it is. Um, so more or less, I'm gonna talk you through the parts that I did not record me doing because I was rushing this last minute with Rachel crying on the couch the night before the con. So for the uh, port, we got the port done and completed. There's the pauldron here that has been attached and has a slightly moving joint. And then we have this plate that also has been attached and is a moving joint. Here's the sleeve um, that I wear with these pieces on. I'm not going to put it on now because I don't feel like putting it on. Plus this is the part where Nikki will edit footage of me wearing it from Katsukon. Um, so the sleeve has been super glued underneath here, so, you know, I just slip it on like so and put it on so the sleeve's already on there. And then um, I have this strap on here that's been super glued on so that it stays securely on my torso because the metal is a lot heavier than the old foam port and this just helps it stay on and not move around as much and then from here we have the rear brace and that's completely finished and done and that slides on right under here and it fits pretty well with uh, that piece if it'll stay but it won't but that this part goes onto my upper arm and then here is the van brace, which is completely done. Um, so I don't know if I like recorded this part in the tutorial or not, but like I fucked up with this. So um, I made it like one cohesive piece. Um, it doesn't separate, there's no elastics. It's just the 
top plate and the bottom plate and it's been uh, riveted together on all four sides and then I have foam underneath here which later on I may paint the black part silver just so it all looks it just looks like a little bit better because um, I don't know how I feel about the black um, but yeah it just slides on but I have to slide it on a very specific way I have to more or less slide it on with my arm this way and then kind of like lock it onto my arm by moving my wrist this way so it stays on more cohesively so there's that and then here's our little elbow joint that Calvin helped us make it's so great and it's actually moving and so far I'm still really pleased with it so I'm just gonna continue to use this elbow piece until it breaks because it did a great job at the con and it attaches like right here so it's not like stuck in my elbow joint like in this like little elbow crux and being annoying when I wear it and then I still have the same old hand from my last automobile build. Um, I'll probably get around to remaking this thing, but for the time being, I've got other armor projects coming up, so the hand will happen later. And this has been Nikki's really shitty automobile tutorial. <laughs> Told you guys this would be really bad. Was it really bad? Yes. Yes. It was a journey. So Shout out to Rachel for cutting out all the metal. Shout out Yeet. to Yeet. Shout out to my friend Kristen and her entire family uh, for helping me also make the automobile. Because her dad and I, like, he, he helped me cut out the, the grill. Without him, this grill wouldn't exist. Um, and then, you know, also shout out to Dallas, our strong man, for helping us rivet shit together. And you know, shout out to Diane for observing and putting up with us like, sleeping through the <laughs> sleeping through us <laughs> banging on metal at one in the morning. So yeah. Thanks guys. You made a nice arm, got lots of compliments on it at Katsukon. It fits a lot better, it looks a lot better. Oh. So another thing I'd like to point out, this is held together with a piece of elastic very meticulously riveted <laughs> riveted together uh, so the elastics riveted to the plate and then the other part of the elastic is riveted to the pauldron so it's able to move because we could not for the life of us figure out how to rivet it using one nail or one rivet because it's just stupid and I'm not the most experienced metal worker um, but you know for bullshitting my way through and making it an actual like moving joint i think i did a pretty good job the rivets are starting to like pop out of it but it's just as easy as like tapping them down or replacing the rivets um because now i know how to get them back in there but yeah so that's that's how i got that in there when in doubt try to make elastic work for you um which it did and the shit rivets pulled through pretty well. So when in doubt, just bullshit your way through it, cry, have people help you. Um, but yeah. The end, I guess. Goodbye, I need to dye my hair and call my mom back because she keeps calling me and calling me and calling me and calling me. <laughs> what is this?